Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. And in this section of the class, we're going to talk about the topic of the directional derivative, okay? So at this point, with a title like directional derivative, your first thought might be, why are we learning about directional derivatives? We've already talked about partial derivatives, which we've learned are, are derivatives along certain directions, along x, along y, along z. In those specific directions, that's a partial derivative. So what's a directional derivative? That, shouldn't that already be a directional derivative? Well, the answer is, what if I had, I'm going to draw a picture for you in a second, but what if I had a, a function, and I'm visualizing it right here in front of me, so I want you to do the same thing. You have your, your x and your y and your z, right? And this function is a function of two variables, so it's this sort of three-dimensional thing right here in front of you, right? And um, let's say that I didn't really care about the directional derivative along x. I didn't care about uh, the derivative necessarily along y, I wanted to know what the slope of this thing is or what the rate of change of the function is along some arbitrary direction, let's say pointing over there, or let's say it's pointing up this way. I just wanted a, I, I want a general direction that I can calculate the derivative of this thing in any direction that I please, okay? Because what we've done so far is calculate the partial with respect to x, let's say, the partial derivative uh, along x, and that means I'm only looking in the x direction. Okay, the y partial with respect to y is only along the y direction. The partial with respect to z is only in the z direction. So those are the three perpendicular directions. Okay, but what if I care about the derivative off in an arbitrary direction? How do I do that? It turns out to be a pretty important thing, and it ties into another concept in the next section called the gradient, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but now we're talking about uh, this topic. So how would we do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is define the direction we care about. Okay, so in the problem, if somebody says, what is the directional derivative in that direction? Well, how do I define that direction? I'm going to define it with a vector. Okay, I'm going to define it with a vector, which is going to have a direction associated with it, and uh, that's, what I, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's draw a picture. Let's figure out how this stuff ties together. You're going to find that this is not that big of a deal. You just have to define your direction appropriately and use the tools that you already have with the partial derivatives. This isn't going to be a big deal at all. Okay, so I like pictures. I'm going to do my best to draw, to draw a good picture for you here. So here's the coordinate axis that we, we use for everything. This is x, this is y, and this is z. <clears throat> okay, now let's say uh, that I have a function here. It's a function of x and y, let's say. Okay, and so let's say this function kind of is sort of a, a mountain kind of thing, right? And let's say, you know, I'm just sort of drawing a segment of it for you here, like this. So it's a function of x and y. I plug in a value of x and y and I get a value of z out of it, okay? Uh, so that's what I have here. Now let's say, uh, or I should say, you should recall that if I'm interested <clears throat> in the point, let's say, right here, this is the point that I care about, and I want to find the directional derivative in a certain direction, okay? Well, just remember from, your, from what we've talked about before, this direction, whoops, let me draw this a little bit better because I don't want there to be any confusion, this direction right here, this would be what we already talked about, f sub x, which is the partial derivative along the x direction. That would be the rate of change in this function, tangent to the surface right here going along x, okay? Now the derivative going along this direction is y, right? That's what we talked about before. That's looking at the tangent line to this point on this surface right here and looking at the slope of it going in that direction. That's f sub y, okay? Now my question is, what if I don't want to know the partial derivative along x or the derivative along y? What if I want to know this derivative in some other direction? Okay, other than those two, what would I, what would I, uh, what would I do in that case? Well, <clears throat> let's say I wanted to find out what the derivative is, let's say off in this direct direction right there. Well, I'm going to call this derivative. I'm not going to call it f some something. I'm going to call it the, der the derivative in the direction a. Okay, uh, a is just a label, and uh, you'll find out in just a second that we're going to define the direction with a vector. Okay, but for right now. Uh, you can see it right there. So I hope this is a clear drawing because it's a very important drawing, okay? You have the derivative along this direction, the derivative along that direction, and the derivative in any old direction I want could be pointed anywhere, and I call that a, d sub a, derivative in the a direction. a is something I'm going to define here in a second for you. Okay, now if I wanted to hopefully make this uh, even more clear, I would sort of project this down for